whatever design I'm going to use, and I chose a frog. Uh, I photocopied it because I don't draw, and I sized it the way I wanted it. I took it into Photoshop, and I did a reverse image and lined it up on my paper, folded my paper in half, and this allows me to take my metal and put it in between the two papers and pretend like this frog's oh. not on here. Okay, and then um, I actually tape it in place in here on from here to here. And then I slide a piece of carbon paper up under here. And then I very carefully and exactingly trace my design with the carbon paper under here. And I'll back up, sorry. I always scotch bright the metal, put the carbon paper down, trace with carbon or a pen. And the pen that I really like to use is this Uniball Precise. It's a very fine tipped pen. And I don't care if the ink transfers. All I'm trying to do is use that fine tip to trace around my design. And it needs to be fairly accurate. Once you've done this side, then I pull the carbon paper out. I tape it down this way on this side, throw my carbon paper in here and trace my design on the back. Then I mark my front side with an F. So now I've got it on both sides with the carbon paper. Then I purchased this little cheapy, um, is it focusing in? It looks out of focus to me. No, you're good. Okay. Um, this little pen, it takes two, is it double A, triple A batteries? And it runs by pushing that little red button. And then I take my time and I trace. I can't do this while I'm on the iPad, people. So, But basically, it's a diamond tip. And it allows me to trace over all of my carbon. And I do that on the front and the back. Um, and then, and usually when I tape it down, I use my little blue tape to hold it in place because it's easily removed. Um, it's really important to do this, the scotch Bright pad or some sort of real fine sandpaper on here because most carbon papers don't transfer readily to metal. I tried, Catherine Bowman asked me about using um, graphite paper and I didn't have much luck with it, but maybe you all will. Okay, and so when I get started, um, the corners are bent down and I'm going to be working from the back side. So I'm working in reverse and I always need this guy to refer to. But I do my repose a couple of different ways. I've done it where I take this and put it either just on my pitch block or on a sandbag and I start hammering and um, finding the, the areas that are higher than other areas, the depth. And I work that way or I'll fold my corners back so they face me, face the backside and then it gets, um, sorry, opposite way down the other way. So it gets put into the pitch block so I can repose all of my work that way. The tools that I use for this are Fabrizio Aquafresca's tools. And it, this is the set and you get three of each shape. And so you can see the squares, the straight the curves, the ovals, um, there's some straight lines and there are two or three um, texture tools. So I think you get 20, 18 to 21 tools in here. I didn't count in his set. Um, all right, Catherine, I'm gonna move. Does anybody have any questions there? Just brief little questions. They're all I don't... muted right now, but I can unmute them. Do, Do you, you want to wait for questions? I don't care, <laughs> it's up to you. Well, let's see if they want to ask anything here. We'll keep it short and sweet. Um, are there any questions? about any of this at the moment. We can't go into big detail on it, but. My question is, what's the name of that pen and where do you buy it? 
it's you can buy this at like home no i don't mean that office. one i mean that this the one. one oh oh sorry etches. linda yep yep it is actually called this one is called the original easy etcher um <laughs> i got it on amazon and it was i think Catherine got hers for like 13 dollars. i think i paid twenty dollars for this one it comes with two different diamond tips there's a little tiny allen wrench that allows you to there it is to take that tip out um and they send you two batteries with it which is pretty amazing so for 20 bucks on amazon it's pretty cool great thank you you're sure. very welcome it's i like this because it is easy to hold in my hand i didn't like the other engraving uh tools you can get them for yeah, engraving, yeah. like your, t you know, marking all your stuff in your house. Tools, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're great, but they're just really awkward. Okay, I'm going to move over to... How much was Fabrizio's tools? Fabrizio's tools are $600. I guess so. Wow, Okay. Wow. He ha see, I, I can attest to this. He hand makes every single tool that he sells. So this guy takes like through the winter months when he wasn't traveling, um, he will sit down and make, I can't tell you how many sets of tools. So they're, I know that they're all handmade and he uh, tempers them all and everything too. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm gonna move over to um, the phone, Catherine. Okay. Okay, so, oops, I forgot my frog picture. Let me go get him. It's a cool setup to have, mm -hmm. you know, your phone and your iPad and your computer if you want. Yeah. All right, peoples. So when I'm getting ready, I've already put it into the pitch block. I have already um, pushed back i'm gonna angle this up so maybe you guys can see uh, pull it back this way all right so what you see down around all the edges um i've used an oval i did it prior to the class or the thing tonight so i went around with an oval like this and went pushed back that background metal there are areas like up in this little foot that is not pushed back as deeply, but I went ahead and pushed it back. I also came back in because the metal oxidized during the time of putting it into the pitch from the torch. I took a Sharpie pen, an ultra fine point pen, and I drew, you can see, you can, I drew my lines of everything that's important for me to see it may not show up real well there but um pretty good mm -hmm. okay um and so the first one that i did today i did this one let's see if i can get it over here there this guy and it's not quite finished but you can see the difference in the detail here as opposed to up here mm -hmm. okay so what I'm going to do, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to attempt to work this one here with my camera in front of me. So bear with me. I don't think it'll be very loud. Um, Genevieve, tell them yes, about um, getting your dimension right, your your perspective. Oh, the right. angle, Lights the perspective. Moving down. Yeah. Well, this little guy. I'll just put him here. I did one prior to this one that I'm working on now and I didn't finish it, but I'm gonna pull it out. And I worked on it just a little bit today to kind of uh, straighten up a couple of things and I was able to straighten it up, but this is where I got on this one. The, the frog, whatever you're working on, let's just talk about it in that respect. Um, you need to know the angle at, at which you're looking at your piece. And this little frog is really rather tricky. His, his nose kind of turns up 
his eye is closer. This little bulge here by his eye is, is close. He kind of angles back into the, the metal. So it's really important to take your time and decide what areas are um, higher than other areas because once you start working in the metal, if you make a mistake, sometimes it's just not repairable. And on this guy, I didn't get his nose, if you can see from the side here, his nose, it really, his nose really does come up like this, not quite that dramatic, but it's a good practice plate and I'll go back in and I think I'll finish him. I think my biggest problem is his eyeball at the moment. Mm -hmm. And I have stretched the material so much, I'm afraid it might blow through. And, you know, it's not uncommon for me to blow through the metal. But when you're looking at something and you're transferring your design, it's really important to understand all of those angles. And it's been a big learning curve for me because to work backwards in the beginning, you know, to, to push, repose everything out from the backside is really confusing to me. Now, there's no rule that says you can't pull it out of the pitch block and look at it and you know change it. And since I've pulled this one out of the pitch block, I did some chasing over air. I didn't put it back in the pitch and I pushed some areas back out that I had pushed back towards the um, background and kind of straightened some things up. And it really does help me to, to see things like that. But once this is done, let's say this one was finished, I would come in in this area once my corners are flipped or flattened out, I would push this background back some more. So he would not be, where am I, sorry. He would not be uh, humpy like this. Mm. There would be lots of dimension to him, but not, not quite this tall like this. Any questions? Oh, everybody's muted. Too bad. You don't get to ask. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and show you. I hope you guys can see. <coughs> That's the biggest problem with this setup is I can't see. It's, in order for me to see, I have to have a light on my piece. And when I put a light on it, then it creates a big glare. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to take, where's my, there we go. I'm going to take a curved liner and it's a fairly large uh, wide face. All of Fabrizio's, sorry, all of Fabrizio's tools have, um, they don't have really a chisel point on them, they're rounded. And so it, it, it will cut into the metal, but not as easily as a uh, sharpened, chisel wood. So I actually have turned, this is the, the face that I would normally have to go around a, a curved area like that. I'm going to turn it this way because I need to go this way with it. Now I've warmed up my pitch because it was cold and when it's cold then the edges start popping out of the pitch. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm having a tough time, so bear with me. Like Braille. If you get kind of get the idea. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to go from this larger faced curve to a smaller faced or smaller size, I should say, so I can go around his little toe here and create that bulb. I'm creating, by doing the, the large oval around this area all the way around, it's created a wall of the metal. So my metal won't travel out past that wall readily. That's not to say it wouldn't, but. Um, so I'm actually doing a bit of an undercut here to push the metal um, back under to create 
even a little bit more height. Okay, so I'm going to look at my guy. And so this, all right. So I'm gonna come around. Can you see, I'm gonna work on that toe up there. And if you see the toe, it, it's um, got a little bulb to it. Let's see if we can do that. Hope you can see if I turn this. I don't know if you'll be able to. Before I get really deep into um, detailing the toes, I'll come back in here shortly and. Um, I'm looking for the one. There we are. Um, I'm going to come back in and I'll work on the webbing on his feet. And then you'll see how quickly this starts to transform. But I want to do my lining out here first. And I'm just going to do these two little areas. So I'm going to come in and I'm thinking, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna come in with my large oval. This is what it looks like. Okay, and I am going to push a little bit of this down in the deepest part of this webbing. And that's what I'm gonna call it is webbing because I don't know what else to call it. Hmm. Can you see? Yeah, okay, good. Mm -hmm. Now, we talked about me possibly or doing a, a workshop, a virtual workshop. Hopefully I can get my camera figured out from then. But we also talked about um, can, we, can people use their own chasing tools? And... Yes, of course you can. Uh, the issue that I will come across with is um, trying to see what you're doing or understand what tool to tell you to utilize um, because it's gonna be different because I'm using pretty much all of Fabrizio's tools. Now I do own a set of Valentin Yatkov's tools but they're not as big as Fabrizio's and they're very different. All right. So I'm taking a straight line to, to outline this little toe here. I like to go a little soft in the beginning and get a general outline because I have been known to be the bull in the china cabinet with things. And, I just go in and destroy things as opposed to taking my time. So I've had to learn some patience here. Hmm. Okay, so that's my straight line. And then I'm going to come in. I just discovered on Valentin's tools, he has this great little, is it in focus? It's a, a soft square and it's mm -hmm. slightly, just slightly curved. And I'm gonna come back in along that line that I just chased and I'm going to angle it this way, not straight up and down, I'm gonna angle it. And I'm gonna tap along, I'm gonna planish along that line. So it pushes that real sharp edge that was created back down. Let's see if you can see it. Can you see? Let me pull it up. Mm -hmm. Let me. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? 
So maybe if I turn it around, you'll see it better. Let me turn it around and see if that helps at all. There you are. Can you see what I did here? Yes. So it took that really sharp edge that was made by the liner along there, it took it off. Okay, so we'll go ahead. Since I have his foot turned around, take my curve back there. And even just that little bit of detailing makes a difference in how the, the tone mm -hmm. works. With the block, you see I have to turn it, whereas with your um, chasing bowl, you, pro you can turn it much more readily and smoothly. I got away from the bowl when I started using Fabrizio's tools and I took his first workshop and I just really kind of fell in love with the, um, the black pitch, which is just basically road tar with some calcium carbonate and something else. So can we go scrape the tar off the the highway with our heat gun? <laughs> Sherry, that is not virginal tar. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> wrong, wrong, wrong. Yeah, I, I remember Fabrizio being in class and he would say, you know, it was it was virginal tar. I was like, what? You guys let me know if you want to start asking questions while I'm working, you certainly can, as long as that's okay with um, everybody. So where do you get this virgin tar? Well, I buy it from, well, he makes all the tar blocks, Sherry. So I okay. buy the, I buy my pitch blocks from him. And, and he's been very kind about um, loaning me some tools when I want to teach. And so, but I do like this. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're not supposed to hear me. I thought I was on okay. mute. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you. So is the tar on a, a woodlock? It is. Let me hold it up. And there. Oops. Okay, like plywood. It's on a piece of plywood is all it is. And when I've done larger things, I actually had my husband make a, um, turn this back around. I had him make a large board. I think it's a 12, 12 by 12 board. And I chipped off the, the tar off of three or four blocks and put a frame around it and I melted it in there. So I have this huge, huge pitch block. Holy smoke. And, and what I'm working on is um, where, where this is supported is actually, here, I'll show you. It's the GRS system. It's their shelf. This is the shelf. But there's four holes in the bottom of the shelf. And I had my husband cut a piece of plywood and we've got um, bolts in here. So it bolts with wing nuts underneath uh, and gives me a surface to work on as opposed to the the shelf itself. Um, the shelf is metal. And so the um, tar block moves around on it. And then this is just shelf liner. It's kind of, it's, I don't know, it's not sticky, it's plastic, I suppose. Uh, and it keeps your, your um, block from moving around too. Anyone wants to ask a question, unmute yourself. I, I, there's four of you. I can't unmute for some reason. Maybe if you try to unmute yourself, it, you'll be able to. There you okay. go. 
I've been using chat. Oh, okay. So there's some questions down in the chat box. Well, actually, um, there's comments. You're doing well, a great job. We can how see wonderful and hear you. you are. Good. <laughs> well, you're awesome. Aww. You yes. look great, and you're moving faster than expected. That's from Deborah. <laughs> Pretty quickly, if I didn't have my phone in front of me, I could be working a whole lot faster. Um, but I also find that, you know, if I work too quickly, I make big mistakes, you know, so, so just by doing, let me turn it back around by doing that little bit, it, this, this wow. foot has um, defined a lot, not like that one though. So I've got a ways to go on that. Um, And I have a tendency to try and stay in the area that I'm working because if I jump around like over here to its face or, you know, to another foot, um, I kind of get lost where I'm working. I try to stay focused in one spot. Somebody else might do just fine doing that, but I, I don't do well jumping around my design. But it's just super important. I mean, when I was working today, working on this part of the foot, I had this drawing down in front of me so I could look down at it as I was working and refer to it. It's really important to have a good image and an image that's not just, this one is a little more difficult because it's more of a graphic. It's not a photograph. I really find if you can find a good photograph of something to, you can photocopy it and then, you know, reduce it the size, whatever, you, however you want to do it and transfer it. But to have that original in front of you, I usually keep a book up in front of me of the piece that I'm referring to. Uh, so I have some good detail images. What else? Don't be shy. Did you have to put, did, it's, it's did you put it's very cool? Did you did put I have chap, to chapstick on the back before you put it on the tar? I don't because you know, that contaminates the the pitch. Whether it's a, a resin pitch or a tar based pitch, I don't like to. I mean, I contaminate it enough when I heat it and you know pull things out. Um, but no, I do not. I used to. I used to do that. And you know, quite honestly, Sherry, when I go to pull this out of the pitch block, I've figured out that if I heat the perimeter of it first and then heat the metal some, I can get a pair of pliers underneath here and pry it up and heat it. And like this one, there's hardly any tar on here. Okay. You know? And my, I, the burning my theory off. is I don't burn it off because it anneals my metal. So then it anneals all of my chasing and repose. And in copper, especially, I don't, it's so soft. And so what I do, I take um, mineral spirits and I put it in a glass or a can, don't use plastic, it'll warp the plastic, but some sort of container that's lidded and I drop it into the, the uh, mineral spirits and I have an old toothbrush dedicated to it that I can, you know, scrub along here, let it soak and then scrub it. And that way I'm not burning it off. It's not so toxic. Okay. And oh. then I, I use that uh, mineral spirits constantly over and over again. And then I'll even get so goofy as to drain it through a couple of coffee filters. So it takes out some of the, the tar interesting yeah interesting. we all have our, our little ways of doing stuff um and fabrizio you know always burns it off and i just think it's just it's awful it's just disgustingly smelly and i would venture to say that the majority of the students that come to take a class whether it's with me or somebody else they don't have an exhaust system i do i've got one set up but Boy, is it just stinky. 
you know, to be in this room after someone's um, you burnt their tar off, it's awful. You almost have to clear the room out for a little while. So I choose not to do that. What I'm using right now is a little, um, let's see if you can see it, rectangular tool. It's soft, rounded face. And I'm just trying to work along the um, sides of the O, I guess. And what do you call it? Digit? Genevieve, what, what thickness is the metal? I am working in 22 gauge. I usually work in 22 gauge. Um, a lot of people will use 18, 20 and 18. And I, it isn't necessary to go that heavy. Um, the 18 gauge, of course, you can stretch it a whole lot more. You can um, get more depth, but I get a lot of depth out of my material. So I don't, um, I don't go any heavier than I have to. 18 is, is tough. You know, it's, it's so heavy. Do you um, ever anneal it? Sometimes I do, yes. Yeah. Sometimes it just comes to a point where I'm, I'm working, 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 and it's like, I, I constantly warm the pitch so the pitch stays softer. Mm -hmm. um, but I really try not to anneal it if I don't have to, Sherry. Okay. Um, if I'm making a vessel and maybe I've done the chasing and the repose in a flat on a flat sheet and then I have to form it to create the vessel, you know, it's going to get annealed then. But by the time that I, you know, hammer, let's say my duct tape is my vessel, by the time I planish it or get it round again, it starts work hardening and then I will go in and planish around my design, like in these areas. So all of this stuff that's kind of puffy outside here gets pushed back um, before it, it comes out of the, the pitch block. I'm looking for my oval. So let's see if I can, okay, this one. So I would come in with my large oval and just start pushing it back after I've done all of my chasing on it. I can't hang on to it very well. And then I usually come in to these edges and do you want me to show you one of my, um, my copper medallions that I'm gonna sell um, for the May, metal, May metals? I'll show you the texture I do. Catherine has a question. Sure. Do you ever uh, work with photographs of people? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that just really hard. I'll tell well, you. Well, the depth would be very to. hard. <laughs> it, it. I don't have an art background. I never took any drawing from junior high on. I never took any art classes. Amazing. And so, um, I'm self-taught. I draw okay enough that I can, when I have a custom job, I can convey what it is I want to do. But I, no, I don't do any life drawing type things at all. It's really hard. So okay. she's not gonna be doing Tutankhamun's face. Oh, I'm sorry, but okay. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> okay, so this little guy, all along here, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got a bit of a texture to it along there. There's another one that I did that has, ah, here's another one. Um, they're matting tools is what they're called that creates the texture on the um, metal. So this one has a liver of sulfur patina. And then this one, you can see the little dots, the little stippling that I did. And that is done with, can I put my hands on it? Probably not. It's it's a pointed tool, but it does, it's got a rounded point. So it, it creates all the little dots along here. This 
pattern here, I believe, is it's a tool used for watchmaking. I'm trying to remember what it was used for, but it's a concave, yeah, concave um, circular punch. And so it creates these little tiny, you tell me if you can see it, it's this outer edge yeah. stuff. They're little dots, little circles. So it creates a little um, texture on the surface. And then there are matting tools that literally just create a um, dappled, I don't have any in front of me, sorry. Um, here, here's one, this is from Valentine's. It's pretty small, but it's a round one. And let's see if I can do it. Oh, sorry, hitting the phone, hitting the phone. Who made that tool? This is Valentin Yatkov. This is his tool. Now, you cringed at $600 for Fabrizio's tools. Let me see how many I got when I bought Valentin's and I'm sure his prices have gone up now. Let's see, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24. I do get more tools. It's close to 30 tools. And when did I get these? I'm trying to think. Um, 2000 and 2005 or six is when I took a class from him. And they, at that time, they were $1,500 for his tools. Oh, now, wow. the, dif the difference from his tools are he hand makes all his tools. This one is a liner, but it's, a, it's got a chisel point to it. His are very sharp and they're all polished. All the surfaces of Valentin's tools are polished. I'm gonna pull a couple more. So they really slide across the metal easily and readily. Fabrizio's tools do not. They're, they have kind of a matte then you can see it's not highly polished at all. And they kind of grab the metal um, and, and don't slide along quite as easily. And I really, I really prefer that over a highly polished tool. And everybody that I know that teaches, like Liza Nechamkin, Victoria Lansford, um, who else teaches? I can't think of anybody right off the top of my head. Well, Valentine, they all have highly polished Nancy surfaces. Core one. Yes, yes, thank you. So they all have highly polished surfaces on them. Um, it doesn't need to be polished unless, as far as I'm concerned, unless you're going to do a lot of planishing with it or burnishing. So. <laughs> Okay, we're getting close to the end of time. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to try and continue working? Or do you just want to chat some more? Genevieve, do you, yes. have, do you have a finished version of this frog piece? No, I okay. don't yet. No, I, um, this was the closest I came and I pulled him out because I wasn't happy with how things were turning out. Um, so I restarted the design and um, just really started today working on his feet. So no, I don't, I don't have one, sorry. Well, what's what's the plan for mounting him or, no, I know the others you have set into a circular polish. Yeah, I made a copper frame for these pieces. Yes. And I've got a, um, I did a grasshopper, let me get him. And I'm not quite happy with it. I haven't put it together fully, but um, on, on the frog, he will probably, he might stay square, but he might also be, I, I think I have enough room on here that I might be able to make a circle out of it. And here's my grasshopper. Huh. So what I do is, um, I put a, a copper wire frame around the edge. And then in order to frame him, this is not 
correct, so bear with me on this. It's got to be changed. But I want to do a copper frame like that for him. Yeah, and I think he looks on the cool without the frame, but <laughs> yeah, he really does. I think you know, I don't think people whoops would care, but you know, on the backs of these, I put a piece of tubing so you can actually do a nail or a screw into the wall and they you know can hang on the wall. So, um, now you know what, sometimes, well, most of the time I fly by the seat of my pants when I'm doing stuff. And I don't think that far ahead as to <laughs> how I'm going to um, display it or, you know, so I always have to, sometimes I get to this point here, I have it all together like this. And then I go, okay, I have to think about this and it gets set aside and then just work on something else. Can you show me how you're holding your hand on your chisel? Yes, of course. Um, let me grab one. So I have, let's see, I'm going to pull my block out of the way so I, you can see my hand. All right. So I have my ring finger kind of down there. I have my middle finger there and my ind index finger there. My little finger is my support finger when I'm going across the surface. And I don't usually have them spread out this far, Sherry. They usually end up kind of crunching up a little bit together, but you have more control with your mm -hmm. fingers spread out like this. I taught myself to chase and repose, and I literally was air chasing where I had no support of a finger on the metal. I was literally chasing like this along the metal. Yeah, that's kind of like doing it with a hammer, you know? Yeah, yeah, it would be, definitely. Mm -hmm. Just learn how so, hard hard to hit and control it. Exactly. Do you do you hold your tools similar? Uh, yeah, I Hakey taught me to hold it closer to the middle finger, which I always found more difficult. Here? Closer yeah. to here? Your thumb right across from your middle finger. Oh, that's awkward to me. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it's, it, always... it's almost there. When you look at it from the side, it's almost mm -hmm. directly across from it. Well, the tripod thing works between the, the pointed finger and the middle finger the way you had it before. Mm, that yeah. seems to stabilize it. I think so, personally. You know, everybody's going to have their own way. And the, the other thing is, um, some people like to tell you that you've got to work left to right. And I work right to left because that's how my head thinks. So. There's no wrong way in which way you move. It's just as long as it, it, it does what it's supposed to do. Yeah. And does the pitch come in different hardnesses or is it all the nope. same? Hardness? Nope, they're all the same. That's one thing that I have never experienced. Uh, you know, I hear everybody talking about hard, medium and soft. And I know Fabrizio makes a cup, he makes one that he says, this is a good winter pitch because it's softer. And then this is a good summer pitch because it's harder. He never talked about any of that. So, you know, this is all kind of on my shoulders of figuring out what works and how, how hot to get the pitch as I'm warming it, you know, like first thing in the morning after it's set all night, um, yeah. it's got to be warmed up some and I don't care what kind of pitch it is. Um, otherwise it's just gonna chip away and pop out, um, but, no, I just, I've never experienced that. So I, I don't know anything about that. Okay. Hmm. What else? What else? So have you thought about cutting out the, mm -hmm. the objects and making brooches out of them? Do you want to wear a frog this large? You would be amazed. Some people would. <laughs> Um, I haven't, I haven't because, yeah, well, I suppose somebody would, would wear oh, that. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Big is in. Yeah, I guess. And, and men are wearing brooches again. Oh, they are. Um, wow. Interesting. <laughs> this would be a great belt buckle. Yes. Yeah. Good. Or I could wear him up here, I suppose. 
I don't normally wear anything quite this large, but that doesn't mean somebody can. Well, I think a, a lot of us make, well, some, I think some of us make jewelry that we would never <laughs> wear that other people. Oh, wear. sure. Yeah. Always. Yeah, definitely. You know, it, it's good to try and like what you're making. If you're going to sell it. Well, if you're going to sell it, exactly. If you don't like it, it's not going to sell. You're going to have to have somebody else sell it for you. That's fascinating. You guys are quiet. I've never heard this group so quiet. Um, hungry. Hungry. <laughs> Dinner time. Some, some old chase pieces that were like large objects, they would go back in and um, put pitch in the back to help support the high areas. Okay. And when we were in Egypt, uh, King Tut's mask, you could still see pitch on the inside. Really? Wow. Really? Oh, that's wow. Cool. That's very cool. Well, that makes sense that, you know, they would, they used with it wow. on a lot of that, Egyptian work or even Etruscan work, the the gold is so thin yeah. that it's not yeah. going to be able to support anything. So I think they probably left some supportive goop in there, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. But I know a lot of times on, on the Egyptian mummies, their caskets or whatever, the gold was put over the surface of the wood, wasn't it? Yes. So, yeah. But how cool to see that, that would have been neat. Yes, people didn't understand why I was getting excited about the black stuff on the inside. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. People aren't looking at that stuff, are they? <laughs> Only us. Oops. Well. You're doing a great job with the chasing. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm sorry that it's not, it's just not very easy for me to work around this this guy. Let's see, I'm gonna move it. Let's do an experiment here with the, um, the okay. <clears throat> thank you. <laughs> I can't think of my you words. You really had no trouble seeing what you were doing. No, you saw you, it really No, you well. probably had more trouble than we did. I mean, it was fine for us. So good, good job, by the way, thank you. Well, thank you. The host of spotlight. Okay, no, I don't. Okay. All right. No, leave me alone. All right. So here it is. This is the way Fabrizio had me work. And so he could see what I was doing. And let's see if. Hmm. Let me see. More of an angle. It's down lower. So yeah. if I have something to prop it up. Maybe. I could put something underneath it. It would probably show up better. Whoa, that's yeah. close. But now all we can see is one toe. <laughs> really? <laughs> you can't see all of this? Yeah, yeah we can uh, see the whole yeah, thing. We can, we, you can we see can the whole see. foot. I think that you could see remarkably well for an yeah. online, you know. <laughs> see, this is a whole lot easier for me to work with, though, because I don't have all that rigmarole bugging it's, me it seems a little less in focus probably because it's close. is it well might and be a know, little too close there see the problem with zoom i have no control over for focusing or zooming in when you when you get onto a zoom call and you're using your technology you, you cannot control your camera in that way anymore. Uh -huh. It is it's stinky on that aspect. Yeah, that, that seems to work great though. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, it really does. It does. Really great. Yeah. See, I can work much more freely with this because it's in front of me, but not like the other. The other, it's all around my arms. And we're having a crazy thunderstorm at my house. Are you? 
Yes. It's dark where I am, so it's probably coming this direction. It was already here. Um, it's been here and done that. <laughs> I'm surprised you can't hear the thunder. I hear thunder, but it might be my house. I'm getting a little bit of thunder, but not much. Okay, so well, how what long do you did think? It, did you just get that far? Pardon me. How long did it take you to get that far? Um, if you can time, I'm not sure you can time it. Yeah, I'm trying to think. You know, doing the repose part of it was fast, Catherine. For me, mm -hmm. it it probably took me less than an hour to get it repose, right. and then I filled it with pitch and flipped it over, put it in. Uh, went ahead and I don't think you can see it, but drew my lines for my details on on everything again. Even though I did the engraving, when the copper oxidizes and if I go back in with a Scotch Bright, it makes it so much brighter that the engraving is difficult to see. So, but you can see it well enough to to trace back over it. Um, what did I spend here today? I spent. You know, and I don't chase quickly. It's not my thing to have to zip through something. I probably spent an hour to get this to look the way I wanted it to look. And like I said, I've got a little bit of detailing to do on this, but not much. It's almost finished. This one isn't far from being finished. Um, you know, it, it looks pretty good. It's, it's got a little bit of work to do on it, but not bad. So overall, you know, the whole thing from start to finish could take me six to eight hours if I really want to, you know, be picky about it, Catherine, mm -hmm. and just come back and go, okay, next, I set it aside and I come back and look at it because I have fresh eyes that way. Right. Um, and I go, well, that really needs to go back further or that really needs to be planished or you know I don't know about you all but I mean sometimes I can work it to death which is not such a good thing <laughs> well customers for some reason always ask that question how long did it take yeah I tell them 45 they, years they want to know oh. that because they want to compare it to the price yeah right and, yeah that's like I yeah. have no idea <laughs> it, it's taken me 45 years to get this done because that's what I had to do was learn Right. Yeah. Steep yeah. learning curve. He's yeah. really cute. Oh, he's thanks. Be, I, he's amazing. I think he will. I, I'm just enamored with his feet for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> They're fascinating. Yeah, they are. I have a great uh, rainforest book that shows frogs and, and stuff. So it's, it's a great um, um, reference book. Oh, look, you're getting really close. Well, let me ask this, since I've uh, talked about doing a virtual class, do you think what I've done uh, by, you know, with the cameras and all would be sufficient enough to do a virtual class? Because I've not done one. Well, you can do a class without yeah. the students doing work too. That's true. Just doing the demonstration. So with that being said, Sherry, do you think I think everybody said this, but you guys feel like you can see well enough that you would be able to come back. Let's say it was a virtual class and you uh, had a week in between the next session. You can go back and look at the video. You think it would be um, a good enough video for you to be able to refer to it? Oh, right. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly okay. from this angle, you know, I, okay. I, this is much. Um, I don't know, more intimate or whatever you want to call it. You can see a whole lot better this version than yeah, the, you can. Than the other, the way I had it set up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And, good. Good. To know, know. I would still talk about the way you're going to tilt your chasing tools and stuff, but we could see all that when you're doing Definitely. it. Definitely. Yeah, because it. Yeah, I think it's difficult. Um, if I'm doing this dead straight, then you probably would see. Um, 
the angle better. Let's see if we can do it. Okay. So I can show you that it's straight up and down and then if it angles away from me or if it angles mm -hmm. towards yeah. me, you guys can see that pretty well. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. We can be the test subjects. <laughs> yes, you have been my test yeah. subjects. <laughs> <laughs> Genevieve, this is Rosemary. Yes. Yes. I, was in a, I was in a workshop, a Zoom workshop with Jane Redmond. Yes. And somebody, it wasn't her, it was somebody else that actually had a webcam connected to their, you know, their other device. And the yes. webcam was the same way your device is, you know, over your work spot. Yes. Their webcam was up there and it was, it, it was, was up above. Yeah, and it was movable. It was actually the best shot that I've ever seen over really? somebody's work spot. Just a, um, a thought. I'm, I've been thinking about getting one too for workshops, well, but. I have that too. I have a webcam. I, I have spent so much money, Rosemary, trying to figure this out that I, I yeah. really, um, I've got a webcam. I've got a, um, what's it called? It's it's something you hold and you can work it from the hand piece and you can move and it doesn't do jerky moves. Oh, we A gimbal. Yeah, it's a gimbal. Yeah. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Oh, gimbal. gimbal. Okay. Yeah, and you know those are great if you're, um, let's say you're skateboarding, and you're skateboarding <laughs> along and you're videotaping. You know, as you go along, it just makes a real smooth, seamless video it doesn't work for what i need it you know it works great to do a studio tour but that's an expensive device to have to do just a studio tour yeah but i might play with the webcam and see you know if that helps because you would get an above shot an overhead shot as well as this angle shot that might work thanks rosemary just You're another welcome. thing to deal <laughs> I know, I know. Takes you know. a village. It does take a village. And I appreciate the input because I'm always open. This has just been such a struggle trying to figure out the angle because when you're teaching something like this, um, they have to see what you're doing. You can't, you know. It's really, I think this might be even better than just live because then you're squeezing around a table with all those people. Right jockeying for a little view of what you're seeing and true i think this is going to be excellent as far as figuring out what yeah. that person's okay. doing okay well and i'm sure everybody will speak up and say something you know right. if they can't see they're going to tell you it's just when i see it up on the screen it's not very clear and you keep telling me Catherine, that it's it's a real clear picture yeah, it is. Well, I think that's it's great. A it's fine. Okay. That's wonderful. Well, the other thing that just a note is that it would help if the studio background was either had a piece of black or cardboard or something. It's uh, back here, Penny. Right. It's like just behind yeah. it. Right there. Well, and that could be done. Yeah. That way you're not distracted by right. the things that are back Stop. there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, get rid of the visual clutter. What? Clutter? What clutter? <laughs> it's not really clutter. It's visual clutter. Yeah, well, it's like all of this stuff could be moved out. My cup could be gone. But then I can't move some of it. But that makes sense. I had never thought about that. Um, okay, good. good. Another note to take into consideration. So, well, I know I didn't show you a whole lot, but um, I just kind of wanted to show you how I use his tools and um, yeah. That's I a think very it's good great. Idea, what you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any more questions? Yeah. Deborah right. left. Yeah, she had to go. I think he answered all mine. Yeah. Okay. So he's more of a square format. So you're going to do a square frame around him? 
Yes, if I frame him, Sherry, that's what I would do is put a square. I mean, actually, when you say framing, I'm thinking a literal frame, picture frame. But I could put a, a copper frame around him, I suppose. I think it'd be more difficult to do, to get it exact. I'm not an exacting girl, sorry. But no, right. I'll have to, I have to think about that, what to do with him. Well, why not have it, your grasshopper? Yeah. Um, when I think about the grasshopper, I think about, you know, when people were collecting specimens and they were pinned onto boards. Yes. And, uh, it could almost be like he's on a sheet of paper and it looks like there's pins on the corner and that could be a different type of metal. Oh, that's yeah. a neat idea. To help pop the background. Yeah, and, like it's a little specimen. Uh-huh. Yeah. That's and you cool. can even do that with the frog and you know the frog could be cold connected by you could yeah that's solder, a great idea solder two screws on or something yeah you know and it's it would just really make them pop that's a neat idea so it could actually be um lifted let's say from the side here he could be lifted off the the metal behind it a little bit you maybe have to not put a spacer in there right mm -hmm. maybe not i'd have to figure that out or you could I try think. to match the background so it matches the curve to it so it, it's like a fluid just just a curved piece of paper or you know with mm -hmm. a curled on one end or something like that that would be cool that'd be cool and then you could chase the name of the frog in latin all right Thanks. Yeah, That's I see, just I see writing. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> how about how about if I etch it? I could probably have more control by I printing etch, it. You etch a little nameplate. Yes, exactly. Because I I can't see myself. Uh, That's the other thing. Chasing letters, they have to be so exact. If they're um, a block letter, if they're a script oh. letter, at least it kind of flows, and you can make a little bit of a a boo-boo here and there, but not with block <laughs> letters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, well, thank you guys for coming tonight and watching. And Catherine Bowman, thanks for all your help um, with no getting problem. everything set up. I appreciate it. And I appreciate everybody's input. I really do. He's wonderful. Or she. Well, <laughs> I don't know what it is at the moment. I'll let you know when I put the eyelashes on. <laughs> <You're a master. laughs> oh, goodness. Well, thank you. Okay, people. Us. You're Thanks, welcome. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. You did a great You're job. Welcome. Well, thank you so much. And I'll well, get we... this up on YouTube tomorrow. Cool. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, everybody. Good night. Bye, bye bye. Have a good night. You too. Yeah. Nobody gets swept away. <laughs> <laughs> really.